and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Henry Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use neural networks to play a game in Swift. And this time it's a game called Nimble Ninja. And now first of all before I continue I'd like to say a big thank you to Michael Leach. Michael Leach is a uh, iOS developer uh, and he's created a game uh, that uses Sprite Kit in Swift for iOS uh, and essentially is a game called Nimble Ninja. So now, let me explain the concept of this game to you to begin. So, first of all, uh, we have a sort of platform. All right, we have a platform here. And we have a character here uh, who has eyes and uh, a mouth, okay? So he's a, he's a character, he's essentially the ninja here. Uh, and we have obstacles in front of him. Now, it's not like your classic game where you have to jump over the obstacles. Instead here, there are obstacles underneath as well. And they don't just alternate like this. Like if I were to do this, they don't just alternate like this. What happens is it's completely random, which is the best part. So, I mean, by complete randomness, you could have three in a row like this. For example, all right. Uh, you could also then have like two more. This could be some sort of example game. All right. This is sometimes how the game could play out. It's completely random, and that's the best part about it. So this is essentially the game. And so in order to dodge this obstacle, now first of all, this obstacle is coming at this uh, person uh, or the ninja. And so essentially, what happens is when you click on the screen anywhere on the screen, this ninja is going to flip around over here. All right, so he's going to flip around and he's going to continue running. The obstacle will go above him. Now, once this obstacle starts coming at him, then he's going to flip over again. Uh, and, uh, and so he's going to dodge that obstacle and he's going to keep doing that whenever an obstacle is beside him uh, so that he can dodge the obstacles up and down. That's essentially how the game works. So now, I'd like to sort of get into how my part of this game works. Now, first of all, this is actually a pretty interesting games, uh, game for a human to play. Alright, so now, humans are good at this. But, I've made a modification to the game. And this modification incorporates speed. So obstacles, over time, come at you faster and faster and faster. Every second, they get faster. And essentially what this allows me to do is add another level of challenge. And so after about like 120, it becomes almost impossible for a human to play. Maybe even 140, it becomes impossible. Almost impossible at least. Because the obstacles are very close together and they're coming at you extremely, extremely fast. But this is where the computer comes in. So now, entirely separate topic. If you don't already know what a neural network is, what is a neural network? A neural network is a very, very interesting uh, sort of form of machine learning. All right. So let me uh, show you what I mean. So to begin, what is machine learning? It's essentially allowing a, uh, a computer to learn like an animal. All right. By that I mean you give it positive examples and negative examples, and it'll create a network in its brain that tells it how to behave. Like, okay, I want to repeat good actions and actions that I think could be good in order to get this reward. And I don't want to do bad actions because it'll give me a negative consequence. And so that's essentially what this neural network is. We're creating an artificial neural network. What this means is it's essentially a biological neural network in your brain, literally with neurons and synapses and dendrites, in your brain that we're mapping out onto a computer on a much, much smaller scale. Because, of course, your brain has trillions upon trillions of neurons. You couldn't possibly, you know, simulate that on a computer. Even the world's fastest su uh, supercomputer can only simulate uh, around, like, a worm-sized brain. Not even yet. Uh, and so, of course, neural networks do take a lot of computational power. But I will be getting into why the iPhone 7 handles this amazingly in just a bit. So, now, let's take an example of a neural network. So now let's say you wanted to create a brain, and this brain could essentially count up, okay? So you give it a, bin a four bit binary uh, sort of number, and it'll give you the next binary number. So let's say we have our inputs. So this is a neuron. Whenever I draw this sort of big O, I mean that this is a neuron. Just like in your brain, these are neurons. So they might not look like them, but they are. <laughs> and so let's say you give it the input as binary 0, 0, 
zero, one. Now, if you don't know, this is four-bit binary, and this would mean one. Okay, this is in ten-bit one. So, uh, essentially, uh, what's going to happen is, let's say we have some more neurons. Now, we of course want to have output neurons. These output neurons will be able to give us our output, which in this case is going to be zero, zero, one, zero. But how do we go from input to output? Do we just connect these and do calculations and do extremely advanced calculations between them in order to find out how to add a number? No, but you're close. What we do is we add another layer of neurons. And this layer is called the hidden layer. So first of all, this is called the input layer. This is called the output layer. And now we're going to add something called the hidden layer. The hidden layer is essentially what does all of the processing. Now again, there can actually be multiple hidden layers, but I'll get back uh, I'll get back to that in just a bit. So, let's say we have six hidden neurons. So we have 1 2 3 4 5 and 6. Okay? So we have six hidden neurons. Now, this input neuron, this specific input neuron, the first input neuron, will be connected to every single hidden neuron. Now, if you're wondering how it's connected, it's connected using something called a synapse. I'll explain this in just a second. So now, of course, every other input neuron is also going to be connected to every other hidden neuron, or every, set, every other neuron in the hidden layer. And so, if I just finish this diagram really quickly, as you can see, Every input layer neuron is connected to every other hidden layer neuron. So essentially what's happening is these are called synapses, what are connecting these neurons. Now these synapses do a calculation. Okay. Now essentially what's happening is, it's, uh, let's say this neuron, it takes a zero and it passes it on to every single synapse that it has connected to it. And those synapses will do a, cal a very small, small and minor calculation on them. And then they'll send that, uh, that like this, uh, this neuron, let's say it's going through the first synapse, it's going to send it to the first hidden layer neuron. Now this neuron is going to receive input from lots of uh, these other four neurons as well. And so it's going to take all of those four inputs from the input layer, from these synapses, and it's going to do a calculation on those, and then pass it on again through synapses. And all of these neurons will do that with the corresponding inputs that they were given. Now, if you're thinking that, hey, wouldn't all these neurons get the same input, though? Well, no, because the synapses between these, uh, between, like, let's say, uh, this neuron and this neuron or this neuron and this neuron are completely different weights. By weights, I mean how heavy the calculations are, how big the calculations are. Are they very minor, sort of, uh, really, um, sort of, uh, really sort of minor calculations, uh, like fine-tuned calculations, or are they major calculations that make the number a lot bigger or a lot smaller? That's essentially the weight. And then, from the hidden layer, they go right back to the output layer. And so, essentially, of course, we are connecting every single hidden uh, neuron uh, in this layer to the output, sorry, <laughs> to the outputs. Um. So what's happening here is, again, we are connecting to these neurons using these synapses. Now these synapses will again do another calculation on the, uh, on the number that they were given from the hidden neuron. And then, Finally, now I know this is taking some time because this is exactly how complex a neural network actually is in a computer as well. So as you can see, this is essentially our architecture, if you will, of how the neural network will work. Now again, every connection has a weight. Every neuron has a weight. Every synapse again has a weight, and the output neurons have a weight as well. And once everything comes together, and all these calculations are completed, you'll have a final output. And this is all done within milliseconds.
So we're essentially using exactly what your human brain does. As I'm talking, my brain is implementing a very, very, very similar technique, except on a much larger scale with trillions upon trillions of neurons, and that's how I'm generating the speech. Quite ironic. <laughs> but uh, essentially, now to begin. When you initialize this neural network, the weights on the synapses and the neurons are going to be completely random, and your output will be absolutely random as well. Complete gibberish. Not useful whatsoever. Okay? Now, you may, by completely random chance, get the perfect random weights and good output, but that's a very, very small chance. So, now, how would we actually get this to give us useful output? This is how. What we do is we'd say, okay, you gave me this output, but I expected this output. You give it that positive example and tell it what it did was wrong. So what's going to happen is it's going to put a technique called backpropagation into play. And what's going to happen is it's going to take that output that it was supposed to give and sort of make that act as input. And see how, like let's say we were to uh, give this uh, run in reverse. If we were to give it, okay, so let's say, it, okay, sorry, I'm going all over the place, but let's say your random neural network gives you uh, 1101, okay, as your output, but this is completely wrong, all right, we do not want this, all right, but we do want this, we do want this output though. So what's going to happen is you're going to say, okay, let's say, that we took this and ran it backwards through the neural network and wanted to get exactly this. How would we do it? What's going to happen is it's going to send this back and it's going to adjust the calculations ever so slightly in these neurons, in these synapses, in these other neurons, and in these synapses. And if it doesn't get this output, it'll do that again in a very small fashion over and over and over again until it reaches this input or very very close to in this input. How far it is from this input is called the error rate. You can make the error rate to be as small as you want or to be as big as you want. In this case, since we want this to be as accurate as possible, we're going to give it an error rate of 0.01. Now of course that may take hours, days, maybe even like a week to train depending on your training set and how exactly accurate you'd like it to be, but it shouldn't be a problem. Because, of course, I mean, it does pay off in the end. You have an extremely useful counter. And, of course, this is only 4-bit. You could apply this to many more bits or even to much more useful calculations rather than just an adder. But, continuing, though. So now, we have this neural network and we have this backpropagating for many, many, like, for many different outputs. And that's essentially our training data. Then we have our test data, which checks the error rate, and if it's too high, it'll try to bring the error rate down by backpropagating over and over again. But this still, I mean, you kind of have to admit that why would this be useful? We can just do plus equals one, plus plus, or like equals to this plus one. You really don't need this type of neural network. But what you do need is for a neural network to do something much more advanced that you can't just write a massive function for. Let's take a look at that. So now, let's just say that we don't use this neural network, right? We're not going to be implementing this. But this was a pretty nice example of how a neural network actually works. So let's just take this off the board. So now, what, is, what are we going to be doing in this video? Now, if you haven't already gotten the clue, we're going to be mixing Nimble Ninja with neural networks that create a bot that can play the game almost infinitely. Let's take a look. So now, as you can see, what I'm going to do is, let's say uh, we have our game, all right? So of course, we have a little platform. We have our person here with his eyes and his nose and his mouth, uh, and we have our obstacles, all right? Now, let's see what parameters we have. Now, if we were to feed some sort of data from the game into the neural network, what would the data be? Okay, so let's see, we have the current speed at which, this, uh, d at which the obstacles are running towards the ninja. So we have the speed. That's one of our parameters. We have, I don't know, the x value of the nearest obstacle. 
And that's pretty much it, actually, uh, for this game. I mean, there are a few more, like the X obstacle, uh, the X value for the ob uh, for the obstacle on the opposite side. But I'm not going to get into that because that could get a little bit complicated with the training. So I'm not going to get into that just yet. Uh, in fact, I'm actually not even going to get into the speed today. All I care about is the X value of that obstacle. Let's take a look at what I mean. Now, let's say we have a neural network with one input. No more inputs, just one input. Then we have a hidden layer. Okay. Now this isn't just these many neurons. We have a hidden layer of 300 neurons. And so this input layer will connect to each and every single one of these neurons, and there, of which there are like 300. Okay. And then we have one output from which each neuron will connect to again. So essentially we have 300 hidden, one input, one output. Now how would this work? So our input is the x value of the closest obstacle. And our output is whether to not whether or not to flip. To flip or not to flip. If it is over if this output value is greater than 0 0.99, we consider that yes, we do want to flip. If it's less than 0 0.99, then it's a no. We do not want to flip our character. And that is essentially how it's going to work. But what's going to happen is I'm going to play this as far as I can without it getting too fast. And right as I stop playing, or as, right as I lose, the neural network will kick in. So essentially, while I'm playing, I've created, uh, I've edited the code a little bit of this game, actually quite a bit. Uh, and so essentially, it's going to collect data of how I play, and it'll clean up the data, and sort of, it'll organize that data. After that, it's going to use uh, the, an API uh, from Colin Hundley, his GitHub will be in the description, as well as Michael Leach's. And so essentially, uh, it uses an API from Colin Hundley called Swift AI, which has a neural network library, essentially, a neural network, a neural network API. And so it's going to feed that data into the neural network. Then the neural network will backpropagate, 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 and train, 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 test, 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 until it reaches an error rate of under 0 0.01. Once it reaches that error rate, we know that we're ready to let the neural network play. The neural network will then run into action, and it should be able to play almost infinitely unless it gets fast to the point that it's unable to, like, it, it doesn't even appear on screen. It gets that fast, which I could solve technically by creating a maximum speed, but for the first version, this is pretty good. Anyway, though, so this is essentially how our final application is going to work. It looks like a simplification here, but trust me, it's not this simple. Uh, but I'm here to make it simple for you. So I hope that by the end of this, you'll either A, be able to implement this into uh, this Nimble Ninja game by yourself, or B, be able to implement it into your own game. In fact, I'm working on implementing this neural network technique to much, much more advanced games. Uh, hint. Apple picking. Uh, but anyway, you'll be seeing more of that on my YouTube channel later. But for now, this is what I'm going to be explaining to you. Hope you like this part. Again, thank you very much. Uh, but now, the rest will be explained in part two when I explain to you how you can use these neural networks to play Nimble Ninja. Again, thank you very much. Uh, if you liked the video, please make sure to leave a like down below. If you think it can help anybody else, please do consider sharing the video. And if you really like my content and you want to see much more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as it really does help out a lot. Uh, one more thing, if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, you can leave it down in the comments, tweet to me at Tajimani, or email me at Tajimani at gmail.com. In the next video, you'll be seeing the source code, and in the description of the next video, there will be a link to the source code on GitHub. Anyway then, goodbye. I'll see you in part two. Goodbye.